Um, so I don't have any lollipops, uh, but we have a boring old Gazehawk t-shirt here. Uh, my last ones. Who wants a t-shirt? There you go. My throwing arm sucks, so I'll do, do the easy throw. So, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Brian, and I'm a co-founder of Gazehawk. Gazehawk provides eye tracking technology using ordinary webcams. So, let me ask you a question. Who here uses some kind of click-based analytics tool? You know, Google Analytics, anything like that. Awesome. Most of you. So, that's a really useful tool, and it gives you some really good data into how users interact with your site, but it only really tells you what happens when they're transitioning between pages. You don't get a lot of data as to what's going on when somebody is within a page, when someone's just viewing your page or, or viewing your data. Um, so if you want to get that information, uh, your previous options, one thing that you could do, excuse me, one thing that you could do was you could do mouse tracking. Uh, where you basically follow the mouse that moves around the screen and get metrics from that. But uh, a recent Google study uh, that they published showed that there's only a 32% correlation between where the mouse moves and where people are actually looking. There's, there's not a very strong correlation there. Uh, if you think about, do you move the mouse uh, you know, over what you're looking? Uh, so that leads to the logic of eye tracking, which is actually just figuring out where people are looking on the screen. So let's say a year ago you want to you wanna run an eye tracking study. Um, your options are pretty much to go out and buy a $40,000 piece of hardware, bring people into usability labs, sit them in front of the device and run them through a study. That's one option. Or the other one is to pay a consultant somewhere around ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 to do the exact same thing for you. So that's where Gazehawk comes in. Uh, what Gazehawk does is we take a video using just an ordinary webcam of somebody browsing a web page and figure out where they're looking on that page. Here we have one of our testers uh, browse, browsing a Best Buy product page. The darkening areas show exactly where she's looking as she decides if she wants to buy this camera. What Gazehawk does is show you which elements, which buttons, which ads, which photos your users are looking at as they interact with your page. This is uniquely detailed information that you can use to improve the usability of your website and optimize for conversion rates. But the real interesting use case and where Gazehawk is really disruptive is in brand advertising. Brand advertisers right now are forced to rely on click-throughs and impressions as their main metrics when making decisions. But these aren't what actually matter to them. What matters to brand advertisers is eyeballs. Knowing whether or not somebody viewed your message or saw your logo allows advertisers to make intelligent design and purchasing decisions. Let's look at an example. Here we have a study we ran on a TechCrunch whole page a while back. Uh, as you can see, the ads in between the articles got a decent amount of attention, as did the, the orange ING direct ad in the top right. But the, uh, the TechCrunch event ads in the bottom right, not so much. This kind of information is incredibly valuable to publishers and advertisers alike, and Gazehawk is the only company that can effectively, effectively provide it. So, that, that leads to the question of, of what's next. So we have this technology right now. We launched back in July, and we have the ability to figure out where people are looking on, screen, on the screen. But, but we like to think bigger than that. We like to think you know, a little into the future, too. So now that we're running these studies and we're getting this kind of data, we're building this huge corpus of information on how people interact with the web that really nobody has done before. There have been some controlled studies, some 50, 100-person studies, but you don't really see many 1,000-person eye-tracking studies, 10,000-person studies. And once you have this data categorized by how people interact with websites, by what type of website there is, by what you know, demographic the person is, you can make some amazingly deep inferences into how people use the web. And you can do some very interesting things with that. So you can, you can use that to change how you design your page. You can, do that to, you can use that to have incredibly targeted advertisements. There's just a lot of stuff you can do with that. So that's what really gets us excited, is taking this huge corpus of data and using and spreading the analytics across it so that you can make some really intelligent inferences into how people use the internet. So I left TripAdvisor uh, last year to found the company uh, with Joe. Um, I was at TripAdvisor working on uh, TripAdvisor flights. Um, I was, before that, I was at Yahoo and Mozilla. Uh, my co-founder, Joe, uh, got his, got his uh, master's from Carnegie Mellon. He was also an APM at Google. Um, we were later joined by Scott, who we snagged from Cisco Ironport. He also uh, did data analysis for the Human Genome Project. Um, I'm also very pleased to announce that, uh, I just found out about half an hour ago, that we're going to be jo joined by Owen Byrne, who is uh, one of the, guy the guy who wrote the original version of DIG. Um, we, just, we just got approval from that about half an hour ago, so I couldn't even put it in the slide. Um, but we're really excited for that. He's a really great guy and a really awesome engineer. Uh, we also have a great group of advisors over here, just a few of which are listed here. Uh, so uh, we're Gazehawk, and we're making eye tracking relevant for the web. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, before I go to Mark, I actually work at a university where we have a gigantic eye tracking lab where we do studies with thousands of people for Comcast, for screens. So you said that there aren't, this data doesn't exist, but these kinds of data and data sets do exist. How do you think that, what is it that you think is different from the kinds of eye tracking data that you provide? Oh, so, when I, so basically when I said kinds of data, I mean a very natural organic environment. So the thing with eye tracking devices, Toby's SMIs, is that you have to bring someone to a usability lab and run them through a very specific study. Uh, you, can, you can send them to Google and say find something and have them browse around the web, but they're still, they're still very aware they're being tracked. They're in an unnatural environment. We actually go to their houses around the country. So you bring a Toby to their house. We actually go and watch what they do and we have, um, they have devices that have cameras on them. I see, so you're putting a, a bar below their screen. And we have a person in their environment. So I how see. is yours different? So ours, ours is entirely self-moderated. You, you don't have to go to someone's house. Honest, uh, you don't have to go to someone's house. You don't have to uh, set up any custom hardware. You don't even have to install any custom software. The only difference uh, between using us in eye tracking and just browsing the web normally is uh, twofold. One, you have a little light on your webcam saying that's currently on. And second, you also, uh, you also have to calibrate at some point. Right now we calibrate before the study, we could also calibrate afterwards, which means it doesn't actually impact how you're browsing. Okay, Mark. Um, <clears throat> we're very early in the morning, but this is uh, my favorite presentation by a long shot. Uh, and I wanna say why, both in terms of the concept, real innovation, and in terms of your presentation style. So what came across in this? You have relevant skills. You told us about your background, that you came from TripAdvisor. It's a very clear link to what you're doing. Uh, you gave us a very well-defined problem with data. 32% of where you move your mouse you know, um, is not actually where you're looking. $40,000 is a typical eye-tracking study. Uh, you gave us a strong business case of why this is compelling, and you told us who it's compelling to. And I believe this is real innovation. Um, I'm not saying it's... Uh, nuclear science or something like that, but a real innovation, and I invest a lot in performance-based marketing, and I know uh, we've looked at a lot of the banner blindness studies that show that a lot of the traditional online ad units are just not consumed at all, and people aren't aware of that. The only question I have for you is if you've raised VC and how much. <laughs> so, we, so we were a Y Combinator company, uh, so we raised you know, their, standard, their standard amount, and then we also raised a small seed round. So. Is that public? How much you raised, or from whom, or it's private? Um, so, I, the, some of the investors there, there are, it's a long tail end of angel investors. So, we have Dave McClure, uh, 500 startups invested. Uh, the rest we haven't publicly announced yet. Okay. But we're open to talking to investors if they want, <laughs> if they want to come tackle Love us to afterwards. Talk to you. <laughs> if anybody to happens us. to be in the room who's looking to invest <laughs> in a company, um, <clears throat> Robert. How much do you charge for this? I don't think I caught that. So right now we have, we have kind of two sides to it. One is the, the small business self-service kind of model. So we initially were targeting the usability market, um, which, which was good for building out the technology, getting a lot of feedback, because you can interact with the community very quickly. The sales cycle is much smaller than advertising, for example. For that, for a 10-person study, we'll charge $500. For a 20-person study, we'll charge $1,000. Once you get into the, the ad agencies and working with them, um, the pricing model is it's, it's enterprise sales, so it's custom quoted for every project. And, and do, does this work on iPad? Yesterday I saw Avery show, showed me a preview of their iPad version, and I sensed that their read, me more, read more button was in the wrong place. Is this a good thing for an a entrepreneur to come to you and say, can we test out where to put that damn button? I am so glad you asked that. Uh, we're working on it, is the short answer. Um, we're a fairly small team right now, and we're very bandwidth constrained. Hiring is incredibly difficult, um, but that's something that we're really, really excited about, and we're looking forward to exploring more. How, how much do you pay the people to be so, watched? So right now, there are a couple of ways that you can get testers into the system. Right now, um, so we have our own little small, not really statistically significant tester panel, um, and we pay them $4 uh, a test. Uh, or $2 if they don't follow instructions and they don't test well. Um, we can also work with panel companies, so we work with Toluna, SSI, um, we'll work with Lightspeed. Or if, you're, if you have an email list, if you're a big company, uh, you can just send an email out and have your own testers use, and you can incentivize them however you want. Um, we can also do interrupt studies where you basically can siphon a small percentage of your traffic into our system and give them a pop-up and say, will you participate, uh, which you can incentivize with a contest or just payment. And do you have examples, you talked about inferences in the future, other ways that people might look at this data, do things with this data. What, give us a couple examples. I'm sure okay. you've thought about it. Absolutely. So here's, here's a couple of examples. Um, so one of them, actually, can we go back to the, um, the TechCrunch? Uh, 
One more. There we go. So uh, we've run a couple of studies on two column, a bunch of studies on two column and three column layouts. Um, people don't look at the right column, especially younger people. Uh, the ads that they, um, because you're, you're gonna assume there are ads there. Um, we've, we've run a lot of right columns. There are a lot of text. If there's text, no one's gonna look at it. The one thing that does draw attention is maps. Uh, maps and pictures of faces on the right column. So if you're trying to put content in the right column, it's just, it's, it's an uphill battle. Um, similar with the left column, you get people, um, you know, a lot of people use left column filter mechanisms uh, to kind of siphon results in a, in a kind of results style uh, setup. And uh, people don't tend to look at those in, in older audiences. Again, the younger people tend to interact very, very differently, uh, which is one of the more interesting things when you break it down by age in terms of how people interact with websites. The uh, Jakob Nielsen data says that the two things that convert are faces and body parts. So it's no big <laughs> surprise that you see a lot of body parts in ads. Um, in, in terms of uh, the innovation, what, can you talk a little more about the underlying technology? Is it, you know, how difficult is it to use the webcam to actually figure out where the eyes are going? Absolutely. So, it's, so how defensible is it, is my question. It's, it's not easy. Um, we have one patent pending on it, uh, just to preempt that question, and we have a couple more that we're working on filing. Um, it's, the thing is, with, with the custom hardware solutions, they use infrared light, uh, which reduces, reduces the noise very significantly, because most rooms won't have significant source of infrared light, so they can bounce light off the eyes. The signal and noise ratio in a webcam is very significant. You have a lot of things you, you have, you know, if you're wearing glasses, sometimes you get glare. And the main thing I think is, is twofold. One is, is separating out the signal and noise, and two is identifying good tracks versus bad tracks. Um, so it's a lot of computer vision. Uh, we basically have two engineering departments that we plan on building out. One is the, the computer vision, the machine learning side, um, you know, PhD graduate level stuff. And one is the web development, which is the integration, the interrupt studies, and kind of the user experience. So it's that, that first part of the organization, that stuff is, is very difficult to build out. And fortunately, there, it encompasses a lot of problems that have a lot of good research in them. Head tracking is a very well-researched problem in the world of computer vision. Um, head uh, face detection in images is also uh, very research, but you have to combine them all and then add in a lot more stuff to actually do the eye tracking. <coughs> have you done so, some market size? Let me get Chris real quick. She's been. I, well, I just want to clarify because I've been watching companies for the last dozen years trying to get to the same answers that I, apparently you're able to do. So your real innovation here, your, is, your disruption is that you're able to collect a lot of data very inexpensively. Is, is that correct? And, and you're going to then apply that data in an advertising uh, or to the advertising marketplace? That's correct. Uh, you, you have a great group of advisors and, and uh, your team in terms of, of technology and entrepreneurship. Who in your team really understands how advertising agencies work? Because I think that's a, a big challenge for you is, just, is actually extracting the dollars you need from them. That's, that's a very good question. It's something we've been very conscious of. Um, we're, we're all engineers. Um, I, I do a lot of business stuff. I, I've been exploring the advertising world for a while now. At TripAdvisor, I learned a ton about advertising because they're a very, very strong publisher with their own media network. Um, but at the same time, we recognize that you know, we, don't, we don't have years and years of experience in the advertising world. None of us have worked for agencies. So that's where we've really been building out the advisory team. Um, Jason Lapp has been a great, great help in helping us bridge that gap. Um, he's a, a senior VP of, uh, I believe, client relations at Millwood Brown. Um, so relationships like that, our advisors have really been helping bridge the gap. We are looking for someone who, can, who has exposure to the advertising world, who can, who can talk the talk and walk the walk. Um, we think that the, advisor, the advisory committee will be a good stopgap until we can find the right person for that. Yeah, how, just, how big is the market today for, um, for analytics, for advertisers? How for, much are they paying? And, uh, and then is there, <laughs> I'm just wondering if there, I mean, that's your key market, but then is there ultimately an end user application for this? Um, so I'll start with the first one. So in terms of market size for analytics, it's, it's hard to measure because there's just so many different types of analytics. There are things that, that are packaged together. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of an example. So the eye tracking market for usability um, is about $100 million. Uh, but like I said, we're more towards the advertising side. Uh, in, terms of, in terms of market on analytics, just, just the brand awareness surveys that are run, which is really just a survey, it's a questionnaire in terms of cost of running them, it's not very high, um, is about a $50 million market. Um, but once you get into the analytics, we, we initially thought we were competing in, in existing markets, but we've really come to realize that we're, we're defining a new market. So I think in terms of, if, of showing a value here, it's, it's the kind of thing where we're not really siphoning, we're not really siphoning money off of, off of an existing market. We're gonna do some of that, but we're also gonna be serving a new market in, uh, 
ad agencies, publishers, and advertisers. So we have 40 seconds left, and, and I'm from up in Indianapolis. We have about 60 metrics companies that are there. That's sort of what we, that's what the, the city's known for. Um, how much have you looked at either partnering, taking this technology and working with companies that are already doing this stuff, or are you guys going to try to forge into that market as engineers? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so, <laughs> so the answer is we, I, I love platforms. I think they're very powerful. They're, they're very fun to work with, and I'd love to become an eye-tracking platform where we just provide the technology. Um, but at the same time, people don't necessarily know how to use this. You know, they, the, the analytics suites, building them out, figuring out how to, how to properly sell them doesn't really uh, exist right now. You know, they have very complicated analytics suites that currently exist. So we're, we're really looking for, um, we're really looking to build out first to kind of uh, create the market, and then we'll do other things. And time is up. Thank you very much for your presentation. <laughs>